So I lost my water pressure last night and I'm not really sure what's going on. So I was here to dug this out last night, but it was kind of dark. So I thought I'll wait till the morning instead. So it's around minus 20, something like that right now. So it's not that bad. So yeah, let's try to find out what's going on here. So I can start this pump with the phone. Let's see what's happening. It's drawing 1.6 kilowatts right now. And you can pretty much hear it down there. So I'm not pretty sure what's going on here. I mean, it's starting. Right, now it's off. I don't know, I need, I need to pull up the pump. I mean, I guess I could send down a camera to see what's going on there before ripping off the pump. No, we're not getting through that <laughs> the first. Oh, come on. Do I need to re take that off? Yeah, no, we're not getting through that adapter. Adapters in the way. We're gonna need to take out the the pump from here. Alright, so I think this is the problem. It's just that this hose came loose. I must have forgotten to tie it or something like that. So yeah, I gotta tie this hose back on it and take it down to see if it works again. But it sure is a lot of I don't know if this is iron or what it is, but it's a lot of it. Huh. Yeah, I need to hurry up so the pump doesn't freeze. Huh. 
Right, I guess we can send this camera down while we still have it. Let's see how the water looks down there. It doesn't seem that good. Okay, so that's the water line. I'm gonna try to measure how how deep it is. Like one meter, two meter, three meter, four meter, around five meters down. So let's get this down before it freezes. Let's see if it works. Okay, so that is the yeah, yeah. Let's turn the pump on. So it does not leak in the connection point there, so that's good. Okay, so everything's in order here. I'm mean, touching anything when it's this cold, you can... <laughs> Yeah, it's easily to get cold burns. I'll try not to touch anything. All right, so that's that. So what I think happened here is just that the hose came came loose from the pump, and it's been acting like a fountain down there, just flushing the water like crazy i mean that's that thing is flushing water i think it's eleven thousand liters per hour so it's been <laughs> steering things around there quite good so i kind of need the water to settle for some hours to let all the sediments flow down to the bottom again so i, I guess that's the, that's just all the brown stuff that was there it's just the sediments that's been spun around when the pump been acting like that so it was an easy fix so that's good so something else I need to do is I need to isolate the house with snow. That's something I do every year. So this is pretty much the new build part. So that's got a concrete foundation and electric floor heating in the concrete. But this old part, it's standing on concrete floor. So it's, the air can pretty much just go under here right now. And I guess that's good for keeping mold and stuff. Out of it, but it doesn't really matter in the winter. So I gotta, gotta go and get this kid started to push up the snow against the wall.
What's going to happen here? The snow is actually against the house right now. But the heat from the house is going to create a little gap between the snow and the house. So the snow is not going to touch the house. I guess tomorrow or in two days maybe. I'm actually going to have a slight of a air gap between there. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of weird for people seeing this that not used with it. It's like wa water damage your house, but it's not really like that. This kind of winter insulation works really great. And I wouldn't say it's actually hurting the house in a specific way. I mean, I've done this for years and there's no sign of any water damage on the house or moist damage. The problem I have with this is that this, this house was from the beginning actually as only a summer house before I bought it. So the insulation in the floor is it's kind of bad. And as it's standing on concrete pillars to hold this this part up, that's different. But it will actually lead cold air just under the house and the floor is really cold. So with the snow like that, I mean the floor is going to be much warmer. Alright, so it's been settled for a few hours now, so I mean it's all clear again. So next mission is to go deliver some firewood, so let's do that. Yeah, so this is only 12 volts, so this needs 24 volts. I'm guessing just boosting one battery will be enough.
All right, so this is <laughs> kind of a mess to leave it in, but yeah, they going to have to get a tractor to get this to a better pile, I guess. Next mission now is to you can see here is to get the snow out of that roof because that building is going to collapse soon if I don't get the snow off. So, since I can't turn the grapple 90 degrees, since the hose is going to break, I'm just going to <laughs> try make something like this and use the excavator to take the snow down. But it's on my to-do list to actually make hydraulic outlets down here, so I can spin this free. But as it is right now, I can spin it maybe 45 degrees.
All right, so yeah, I would call that a success. I mean, I wouldn't do this to a house. This is a old cold storage that is in already pretty bad condition, but at least it will survive the winter now. I guess there will be some nail I need to <laughs> hammer down in the summer, but other than that, I mean, it works fine. Let's take the snow off that excavator while we get at it and call it a day.